It's good news. Who's Yusuf? Oh, uh, Yusuf is a friend from work. Okay. Um, yeah, so, well, he's a Muslim, clearly. And he showed me, he started showing me your YouTube videos, like, okay. last year. Um, so, me, I grew up in a Christian family, Christian country, 15 years of my life in a private Catholic school for all girls. Okay. Um, and well, due to different things, I stopped believing in God. I call myself an atheist for years. Okay. I'm okay. a professor in biology. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay, go on. <laughs> professor in biology. Mashallah. Yeah. So which country are you from? Argentina. Oh, Argentina. Okay. Yeah. So where um, do you live now? I live in London. You live in London. Okay. Which part of London? East Limehouse. East London? Yeah. Okay. Where in East London? Limehouse. Langmouth? Limehouse. Oh, Limehouse. Ah, oh, proper Tower Hamlets way. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in, I'm in Ilford. Oh, so you're... Around the... Round the corner, down the A13 and 406. Yeah, um, I've been here for less than two years, so I'm not that used to the. Oh, area okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> okay, how can I help you? Uh, so, yeah, I will send you the message like a time ago. Yes, that, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I mean, my whole life uh, I felt quite lost. Um, I had girlfriends in my life um, uh, and I was in this sort of thing that like I needed to belong, belong to something mm -hmm. so there was a point that I would call myself oh I'm non-binary I'm not sure I'm too masculine so I, maybe I'm not a woman entirely okay um, I had friends that they were telling me oh maybe you should change the things that you don't like about yourself. Maybe you should like do a hormone treatment or stuff. And okay. Thank God that you didn't do any of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead, carry on. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I have like half my back tattoo. I was just trying to change myself completely. I had my hair into my hips and I shaved my head completely. Okay, uh, okay. Now I'm just letting it grow back. Um, and I mean, with Yusuf, he used to talk a lot about his religion. I used to read about different religions. Even in my country, uh, I I went to a Buddhist temple. I, okay. Of course, I mean, I know about uh, Catholic uh, Christian religion, but I never heard anything about the Islam until I moved here. There okay. are no Muslims in Argentina. Um, I don't know, I never, I've never seen this kind of feeling in a community as I see in, in Islam. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, even between Christians, everyone in my country is like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a Christian, but you're gonna find me in the church, a church once a year. Yes, yes, yeah. And that's like normal for us. Mm -hmm. um, and with Islam, I saw that everyone is like, it has this, they are so close to God, uh, probably because of Salat. Um, and I don't know, I started reading into it. Uh, at the beginning, uh, I was quite confused trying to read the Quran and I was not sure if, or maybe because I'm listening to the translation in Spanish, maybe it's this. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I tried to ask my friend Yusuf, but he didn't took it uh, like nice. Uh, when I said, oh, it's not making sense. He's like, oh, you're saying that the Quran is not making sense. I was like, no, it's not making sense for me. I don't know if like, I'm, expecting something different and now I understand like I was trying to read the Quran the same way that I used to read the Bible like a story um, and that's why for me it was like 
what is this? Why is like changing things? Yeah, 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 yeah. Starts in the middle of the story, and it's like, wait a minute, who, who's this character you've just introduced? And is well, so what? What you find in in Islam, in the Quran, especially, especially the stories of the prophets. We don't need a biography of them. We just need to learn the lesson from their life. So that that's the key for us. What 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 did they bring? What what is it we can learn from? That that's that's basically it. We don't need to know their whole history. Do you get me? Yeah, that's why I was so confused. I was like expecting like the whole story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 I think the only full story, if I'm not wrong, is the story of Joseph. That's the, the full story is there. So the Quran, I, I read the Quran now twice in Ramadan. Every day of Ramadan, I read like part of it and finished the whole Quran in English over on my live stream. Yeah. And I concluded the Quran is basically very simple. Every chapter is the same but in a different way. And it's just basically this. This is what happened in the past. Here's what you should be doing now. And this is what's to come. Every chapter mm -hmm. was, a, was a, a, a reminder of what occurred before, a guidance for what to do now, and then a warning of the future. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I find like so interesting about it. It's like everything has a meaning at like nothing in the quran is there to harm you everything's there like too good for you um and really that fulfill the need i need of yes i was looking belonging. for from guidance like last year i was uh, doing drugs like at least three times a month uh i was drinking a lot uh i was just like losing myself um i who say that it has to be as well with the fact that it's the first time that I live by myself. I used to live with my mom my entire life until I moved here last year. And it was this feeling of freedom, like, oh, I can do whatever I want now. Uh, and I just lost myself in the yeah, process. Yeah, yeah, So it's understandable. But for me, freedom is overrated. Yeah, like, what's the point uh, if I'm just destroying myself <laughs> yeah but there's, no, but there's no such thing as freedom you think there's freedom but everything's just permitted everything's limited there's no such thing as freedom you can't do what you like there's law <laughs> and and at this, at the, so you you could do what you like within the law fair enough but for me like my daughters like my daughters for example if i just let them do what they want they wouldn't know what they're doing their, their, their mind would be different they wouldn't be able to comprehend danger and all of these things so they need guidance do you get me yeah uh, I mean, I didn't, I didn't got any guidance from my parents. No, uh, no. I didn't. Yeah, I, I, didn't. Think, I think you grew up atheist. Am I right? Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't an atheist, as in there is no God. It was like more like is there a God? I don't know. It was more like that. It was more of a apathetic kind of. It wasn't like a Richard Dawkins denying the existence of God. It was a case of like, well, I'm not really got time for God. God exists, don't God exists, don't God exists, it's not gonna change my circumstance. It was only when I realized that Islam was so tangible. It was so something that you could adapt in your life and change your life. And and it was it was literal guidance that would benefit now. Like, you know, in Christianity, it's all don't worry, you just have faith, Jesus died for you, da da, da and then well, you're gonna be married to Jesus in heaven or whatever whatever it is. You know, Islam was like, yeah, so these are the things that cause harm to you in society and don't do them. <laughs> basically yeah. it. And, and, and the one that's telling me not to do them is, is God. It's not um, some man. See, if a man was telling me not to do it, I, I wouldn't listen because I'm the last person you can tell what to do. Yeah. So ironically, I'm, you know, people are all, oh, religion's controlling and this or the other. Ironically, I shouldn't be religious at all because I hate to be told what to do. Hate it, hate it. That's why I can't work for anybody. I have to work for myself. I, can't, I, can't, I just can't be told what to do. But when my creator's telling me what to do, it's just submit my will because my creator knows more than I know. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically me. Yeah. So where, where do you find yourself now then? So do you feel that, I mean, the one thing you're looking for, like you say, is, is not necessarily validation, but it's just social connection. You, you're craving that kind of connection. 
And um, it's just a natural thing for human beings to socially interact. This is what we do. We're social creatures. You put a, if you put a human being on an island without no other human beings, he'll go crazy or she will go crazy because um, we need to interact. It's part of our physiology. It's part of our makeup. Yeah. You've seen the movie um, Castaway. Yeah. Yeah. Wilson, <laughs> you know, the basketball, <laughs> the volleyball, the volleyball, then volleyball becomes his friend. So this is, human. so this is the one thing you'll find in Islam is that you'll find that social connection that you're looking for. But you know, it, it's, it's a very simple process. I mean, do you believe in God? Yes. And do you believe God is the only one worthy of worship? Yes. Okay. So that, that's the first thing you have to believe to be a Muslim or half of what you need to believe to be a Muslim. And the second part is obviously, do you believe Muhammad, peace and bless me upon him, was a messenger of God? Yeah. Do you believe that? Yeah, I mean, when when I was struggling at the beginning with the Quran, I said, okay, maybe I need like a different approach to this. And I started reading about the Prophet's life. Ah, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> And then, uh, so you look at you look at his life, and then you then people say things like, "Oh, he was a crazy guy," and you're like, "I don't see that. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't I don't see what I'm seeing in his biography as a reflection upon somebody who's suffering from mental illness. I'm I'm kind of seeing the opposite. I'm seeing a sane, rational human being here. Yeah, I'm not seeing that. Oh, he was a liar, or whatever. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't see this. I see a guy who was known as a truthful one. I see, I see a guy who didn't have no motive to lie. I see a guy who could have used opportunity to further a, a lie, which he didn't. And I don't see, you know, in what he produced, the Quran, that he was capable as an unlettered person, and then, you know, someone who can't read or write, could produce this over a 23-year period. It's, it's just... So we're saying, so if you read the biography, you're going to be like, I, I don't buy that. And then and what's the third claim? Oh, the third claim is uh, a devil pretended to be an angel to trick him. into. Uh, and then you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I see Islam. I see what it teaches. It teaches cohesion, social cohesion. It, teach, it eradicates racism and all of these types of things. It encourages kindness to your neighbor and your family. And, and this, is, this is not what the devil wants. The devil wants the opposite. You know, Islam encourages worshiping God and cursing the devil. Well, that's not what the devil wants. So once you eliminate these other three things, the lying, the crazy, and the um, deceived, and then he must be telling the truth. And then if he's telling the truth, that means Islam is true. And if Islam is true, based upon the principle of the absolute truth, everything else is false. But if Islam is true, then that means Allah exists. And that means paradise exists. That means hellfire exists. Do you get me? So it, it all comes as a package. So do you believe Muhammad was a messenger? Yes. Then become a Muslim. Just take your shahada. Yeah, I've, I've been asked about that. And I've been told as well, oh, Islam is not for you. Leave this religion alone. It's not, it's not for you. Yeah, don't worry about people. It's not people, you see. It, it's uh, this. My, I, I'm not going to go ahead with it, but this is Satan. This is Shaitan. This is him trying to make you procrastinate, delay you, hold you back, make you try to think twice. Because he doesn't want this for you. He doesn't want you to do what he's promised Allah you won't do. So if you look at the in Islam, in the Quran, Satan was cursed for not submitting to Adam when Allah told him to. And he was thrown from paradise for this reason. And he said to Allah, give me respite from my punishment. So don't punish me yet. Hold my punishment. Yeah, until the end of judge, until until the end of days. Yeah, yeah, and allow me, and allow me to approach this creation, man, and I'll prove to you this creation is not worthy of you. They're not going to glorify you. They're not going to recognize you. And Allah gave him permission. He said, "Okay, till the end of the days, you have do your worst. Go, go for it." And then, so Satan said, "Verily, after what you did to me." I shall lay in wait on, their, on your straight path and I shall assault them from the front, the back, the left and the right. And you shall see that they'll not be grateful to you. So this is the promise of shaitan. He's going to prove to Allah that, that mankind will not be worthy of this accolade that Allah has given to human beings. So that's his job to mess you up, to delay you, to corrupt you. So he'll start very, very subtly. There is no God. 
God doesn't exist, so then there's no Islam. Okay. Once you become convinced God exists, then he's like, oh, okay, God exists. Okay. Well, God exists, but you don't need God. He created everything, but that's it. But then you come to the conclusion, well, if God exists and he created everything, surely he is the source of supreme guidance, so surely I should try to connect to God. And she's just like, oh, okay. So finally, it'll get whistled down to Islam. And, and once you're convinced that Allah is the only one with it, worship Muhammad as his messenger, then the only weapon that shaitan has left is just delay you, make you procrastinate, make you keep thinking it over. But the reality is this. If you do believe those two things, what you've just said you believe, you shake your shahada. You become a Muslim and you start your journey. Now, the thing is, you see, Paula, you know, is it Paula or Paula? Paula. Paula, okay. Uh, the thing, <laughs> I thought so. All right. So the thing is, you see, a flower don't grow in a day. So no one's expecting you tomorrow to be the perfect Muslim, the perfect Muslim. Yeah. But what 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 is expected is that you accept Islam. This is the first pillar of Islam, Shahada. The second pillar of Islam. Just bear me one second. One second. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just. Wait, I'll, I'll bring you back. I have to bring you back in about uh, five ten minutes. Right. Wait. Wait, wait, quickly, quickly, quickly. Is Saudi working tomorrow or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell Saudi to work with Zainab. What time? 11. All right, that's it. That's all. All right. All right so, what's All right. So, and then the second pillar of Islam is um, the prayer. And the prayer is the thing that's going to connect you to Allah. So, th this is the thing. This is the uh, spiritual connection now. Yeah, so five times a day, you just you learn, you learn how to pray. And five times a day, you stop what you're doing and you recognize the one who created you. Yeah. Once you pray like this, your uh, iman will grow and then it will make you strong. So if there are things in your life right now that you're thinking, well, as a Muslim, we're going to be doing this. <laughs> right. Um, you, and what I always suggest is you just write a list of things that you need to stop, starting with the easiest thing to stop and ending with the most difficult, troublesome uh, challenge to stop yeah um and you'll spend the rest of your life working through the list because no one expects perfection you know allah says what well, allah says that if this creation of mine didn't sin yeah if this creation of mine didn't sin i would wipe it off the face of the earth that did sin who would then turn in repentance so allah is not looking for perfect people because we can't be perfect because we weren't created perfect so if we weren't created perfect we can't become perfect all we can do is our best and allah knows we've got a sworn enemy who is on our backs yeah sworn enemy who's just trying to mess us up and this is what we're fighting against and it's a struggle and no one says islam is going to be easy it can be easy it can be a struggle but it isn't about that it's about the truth and living the truth and knowing and then this is why i would say paula to people islam is the only way of life that can give you peace of mind body and soul i promise you paula nothing else can do it why because islam allows you to use your mind so you said you're a professor of biology isn't it yes all right so there's a misconception that apparently religion is against science yeah yeah yep. uh, do, you, do you know who was the originator of the deductive method to, of scientific research no uh, ibn haytham he's a muslim right so a, a muslim invented the scientific me me uh, method of, of logical deduction okay mm. and, and so we can't be against science but science is just understanding what allah's created do you get me science doesn't replace allah S science is just a tool that we can use to understand allah's creation We've got no issues with that. So we can use our minds. Yeah. When we think what's going to happen to us when we die, Allah's told us the, the, the story, the process, the, 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 the grave and, and the day of judgment and paradise and hell. We can prepare for it. We know our destiny. We know, we know the journey's on, which we're on now. We know our destination. We can choose our destination based upon how we conduct ourselves. Yeah. So mashallah, our mind... It, is, is at peace because you speak to an atheist they don't know they don't know what's gonna happen when we die yeah christians think they do now where christians collapse is 
when they they say, "Oh, we're we're going to heaven," we you know Jesus died for our sins, blah blah blah. They think they've got it, but as soon as you start to question, well, why do you believe the Bible's a reliable source of information? Your authors of the Gospels were anonymous, so it's kind of like gossip. Why do you trust it? Why do you think it's? And as soon as you start thinking too much in Christianity on the things you're supposed to believe to be true, they crumble in your hands. Yeah, well, one of the reasons why I stop believing in Christianity is because I. Uh, the Bible contradicts itself in many parts. Or, and I will approach my uh, my teacher and I will ask things about the Bible that for me didn't make sense. And they would just send me to speak with a nun, like to pray because, <laughs> oh, you're questioning the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is a beautiful thing about Islam. We're not told we don't question. We're told to question. We're told to seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Yeah, so Islam gives you peace of mind. It gives you peace of body. How? Because it encourages you to only do things that's going to benefit you and to avoid the things that are going to cause you harm. Christianity doesn't do that. Atheism does it. Nothing else does that except Islam. And peace of the soul is that you finally give your soul the food it requires because you have been feeding it all sorts <laughs> alcohol, drugs, <laughs> whatever it is. Because you're trying to fill a void. You're trying to fill a void that can't be filled with these things. They can get it can gratify for a while, but it's artificial. The the soul needs to eat, and if the soul if the soul doesn't eat, you become spiritually dead. And when you become material spiritually dead, you become so materialistic and so hedonistic and so yolo. <laughs> Do you get me? Yeah. That you you might you might enjoy this world to the max, but it's coming to an end. You know, every everything that's been created has been designed to end. Everything, the earth, the sun, everything. We know it's all going to end. The universe is going to end. Everything is going to end. According to the scientific predictions, everything's going to end. Everything's on a time scale. Yes. Yeah? So this is a beautiful thing about Islam. And you'll spend the rest of your life studying and understanding and learning these things. Islam doesn't stunt you. It doesn't, it doesn't prevent you asking questions. You might you know, want to go into a particular field or maybe historic research or whatever it may be. The options there for you, but the key is what you connect yourself to your creator. You feed your soul, and you connect to a a family one point uh, two point eight billion strong. Now you become part of the family. You take the supreme guidance of your creator into your life. You you take the standard objective morality into your life that you can determine what's right and wrong, not what somebody tells you or one politician says, what your creator says, and that's never in, that doesn't change. It's always going to be wrong, or it's always going to be right. But if you truly believe that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, and Muhammad Sallallahu is indeed his messenger, let's do your shahada. We do an Arabic first, and English. You ready? Yeah. Okay, we do Arabic first, yeah? We say, Ashadu. Ashadu. Anla. Anla. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Washadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Say, so I bear witness. I bear witness. That none has the right to be worshipped. That none has the right to be worshipped. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. That Muhammad. Is the messenger of Allah. Is the messenger of Allah. Alhamdulillah, Paula. You are now my Muslim sister. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Congratulations. And you're, and you're living in the right area. You're living in London. There's no better place to live as a Muslim other than London. Yeah. Yeah, because there's so much facility for, for Muslims in London. You have the masjids, you have the halal, you have you have everything, mashaAllah. No one's going to look at you funny in the street if you if you decide to wear the hijab. No one's, no one's going to bat an eyelid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There, I think I'm almost the only woman in, at the gym that is not wearing a hijab in the women's section. Uh, but you don't need to wear hijab in the women's section. Well, they, they do. But is there men, there's no men there, is there? No. Then you don't have to wear a hijab. Because the, the hijab only needs to be worn when there's men, strange, strange men around. So if there's men who are not your father or your husband or your brothers or, or something like that, 
then then you need to wear hijab. But if you're in an all women's gym, <laughs> you don't have to wear you don't have to wear hijab. But so this is sometimes see this is the way thing. Sometimes Muslims do think a little bit silly. They they they, they go OTT. But the reality is this: the hijab is for is in a particular situation and scenario. So on the streets around, yes, hijab in your home, in the gym, which is female gym. Unless there's no male instructions, is there? It's all female. No, it's all female. Yeah, you don't have to wear hijab. Ask the Muslim sister, why do you wear hijab? You know, it's probably because they don't want to do the hair. You know what happens, you see, right? You know when you don't have to do your hair, <laughs> you see, so you leave the house, you put your hijab on. You don't have to do. You don't have to do nothing. But the problem is your hair's scruffy because it's under your scarf. Yeah. So when you go to the gym, if you decide to take your scarf off, oh my God, you have to do your hair first. This is this is the thing. So um, anyway, there's another story. Do you have any Muslim friends? Uh, yes. You do. Yes. Male, male or female? Male. Okay. You need, you need female Muslim friends. <laughs> <laughs> but you have someone who can connect you to people, or do you want me to help connect you to people? Uh I think I'm gonna need your help with that. Okay, that's not that's not a problem. Um, all right, leave it with me. Yeah, leave it with me, mm -hmm. and I'll um, I'll get you some connections. Definitely so. Okay, thank you. Inshallah. Uh, any questions you have right now? Uh, you know, I I did try to Google like and. Um, watch videos and stuff like how to pray but i find like so many different ways all right let me make it easy for you i'm gonna i can make this easy for you okay let me send you the link while we're talking all right so there's a there's a, a thing called the new muslim academy.org new muslim academy.org that's right all right yeah. I've, sent, I've sent you that yeah mm -hmm. so what you do you sign up with that so you've just accepted islam and then what well, then it will give you access to resource about prayer and all of these type of things but i'm going to find a sister who's going to connect with you directly okay. yeah and i'm going to find a sister who's going to i'm, I'm going to make sure i'm going to make she's dedicated she's going to teach her how to pray and whether we do that uh get her to do that through a video call or whatever it may be I'm going to hook that up, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because this is your priority now, learning how to pray. Yeah, I thought that you had to be like in Arabic. And I speak yeah. three languages, but I try to learn Arabic, uh, but I'm just stuck with the letters still. No point. Start with the letters. Start with the letters. Alif, Ba, Ta, Ta, Jim. It doesn't matter. Look, like for example, the word Allah, like for example, Surah Fatiha, yeah, the first in the first line, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay, how did I learn that? I'm an Englishman. How the hell did I learn that? Okay, so I took the word Alhamdulillah and I went Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. Yeah, now whether I'm doing the right Alice and things like that, it doesn't really matter at this stage. Yeah, Rabbil Alameen. Hit rat bill, hit rat bill. I learned my prayers in a day. It, it's, it's up to you. What you see, this is the beautiful thing about Islam. You get out of Islam what you put into it. So I know. I mean, if you're a professor of biology, yeah, you you could learn to pray in a day. Yeah, you you ser you seriously could. Yeah, it's just about application. But let me find a sister who are going to connect directly. Is that okay with you? Yeah, of course. All right, I'm going to get a sister and I'm going to get her to teach you how to pray. Inshallah. Thank All right? You. Yeah. If you've got any other questions in the meantime, you have my WhatsApp. Yeah? It is on WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're more than welcome. Message me anytime, any time of the day. It doesn't really matter because even if I don't get it at that point, I'll re I will respond as soon as I see. Inshallah. And Thank any you advice you need, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, register with that new Muslim Academy. And give me some feedback. See, tell me what you're getting from it. Is mm -hmm. that fair? Yeah, of course. All right. So you register with them. Look at the resource that becomes available. And tell me, is it fulfilling what you need? If it isn't, I'll make sure you get what you need. Okay. You go tell Yusuf the good news now. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing how you're talking about um, the non, you know, the non-binary flex and all that. I'd love to have a conversation about that another time, if that's yeah, okay sure. with you. Yeah. Because. 
like you said, you could have easily have gone down a different road. Yes. Yeah, because because a sense of belonging, trying mm -hmm. to find someone who you can fit in with. But anyway, it's another story. Alhamdulillah, you're now a Muslim. Congratulations. Do you mind if I share this uh, interaction or shall I keep it uh, on the down low? Um, it's okay for me, yeah. You don't it's mind? Because, nice. you know, yeah. I have a YouTube channel. I like to share um, things like this because it's inspirational for other people who are considering accepting Islam. And um, they, they're they just like on the edge. Then when they see someone else doing it and how easy it is, and it's like, wow, you know what? Do you know what I mean? So you yeah. could be an inspiration for how many? Do you want me to find someone who speaks your lingo or you're all right with English? I'm, I'm okay with English. Well, no. What are your three languages then? Portuguese, Spanish and... Yeah, Portuguese, Spanish and English. Okay, my, my Portuguese finishes at Tutupain. Tutupain, Tutupain, touch me. That's it. I'm done. Inshallah. Paolo, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. No more questions? Any, anything else? Uh, no, not at the moment. All right. Remember, you've got my WhatsApp. Whenever you want, just message me. Okay. Thank you. Take care, my sister. Assalamu alaikum. Thanks.